By the end of this video, you're gonna know five things that you could do right now on YouTube after you've uploaded your content to optimize the views that you're gonna be getting. Because if you think that your YouTube strategy ends after you upload your video, it couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, I just helped this creator, this creator, and this creator go fire on Instagram with a post that's been up for a long period of time because they implemented these five things without skipping any of them. Change number one is you need to make sure that you are removing any languages that are destroying your views. Let me explain. Okay, so here's how you're actually going to figure this out. If you come over into one of your videos, you click on languages right here, you are going to see that YouTube is probably publishing your content in a bunch of languages and you probably didn't realize that this was happening. So my content is getting published in Dutch, in French, in German, in Hindi, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, and this might actually be negatively affecting my views. So if I come into my analytics, and then we come over here, top right hand corner, into advanced mode, we can change this and get a breakdown based on geography. Sorry, I accidentally hit traffic source, based on geography. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna filter this so we could see what places people are spending the most time watching your content, but more importantly, what places are spending the least time watching your content. So for me, Kenya, Ethiopia, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, the Netherlands, all of these are destroying my views. In fact, anything that's lower than the average right here is destroying your reach. So we could see that I have a bunch of countries that are doing that. So what I want to do, and this is the same thing that you should do, is go through and disable all the languages that people speak in these countries. Because clearly, one, it's not getting us a lot of views, but more importantly, it's actually getting us way less views because YouTube sees that these people don't spend time watching this content. Then and they stop suggesting the content to other people that could actually be interested in it, but it's just feeding them the wrong data here. Now change number two is you need to make sure that you're going through and you're A-B testing the titles that you're using and the thumbnails that you're using. But there's a strategy to this and you need to make sure that you aren't doing both of them at the same time or that you aren't using YouTube's thumbnail A-B tester tool because it could actually ruin your reach. Let me explain the correct way to do this. Okay, now when it comes to the right and the wrong way to actually do this, so if we come over to this video, we come over here to details, we'll see A-B testing right here. If we click on this, we could see that we could A-B test our title, we could A-B test our thumbnail, or we could A-B test both. Now, I would never do title and thumbnail. I would never do thumbnail. I would only do this with title. And essentially what you could do is come over here, add in other titles and A-B test this because different titles on YouTube control how many views you're actually eligible to get. Because let's say that I have this one right here that's how to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube before 2026. And I have this one that says do this to get a thousand subscribers on YouTube before 2026. I know that this sounds crazy, but this being a how-to video is going to get a different amount of reach than this video that's going to be an action based video and what you can do is go through and A, B test these. Now, the reason that I'm telling you to never use the thumbnail tool is because this tool is actually broken on YouTube. The title tool is not broken, but the thumbnail tool is broken because what YouTube is doing is they're comparing this thumbnail and another thumbnail on how long they get people to watch my content for. And that's not actually what a thumbnail does. What a thumbnail really does is controls the click-through rate of the video. So if people think the thumbnail's interesting, they click on the video. If they think the title's interesting, they click on the video. It doesn't really have much to do with how long people watch the video for. So if you want to quote unquote A-B test the thumbnail, what I would do is I would just come over here and I would scroll down here. I would click on this right here. I would change your thumbnail and then I would just come into your analytics and come under reach right here, look at this impression click-through rate and see if it goes up or down based on when you change a title. Just make note of when you changed it and then just come here and track it here because this is gonna be the correct way to see whether or not your th new thumbnail actually increase your click-through rate. Now, the next thing that you need to make sure that you're doing is you need to start going through and optimizing all of your metadata for all of your old posts on YouTube. Because if you have posts that have gotten views and then died out, you could kick them back into the algorithm by using this AI tool I'm about to show you. Now, 
The way that I personally do this is by using vidIQ. So if we come over here and let's say that this video right here didn't do anywhere near as well as I would have liked it to do, we could click on this right here and we could see that vidIQ is actually going to populate my channel here with additional titles, with additional descriptions, and with additional tags that I could actually use. In fact, it pulls this up right here. So when we come over here, this is now loading with AI. We could see that we have new descriptions. We could see that we have new titles. What we could actually do is click in here and get this to create other title suggestions so we could go through and optimize our titles. We could do the same exact thing with the description right here. And if you click into this right here, you can actually tell this what your video is about, what keywords you're targeting, and what emotion, and it will actually change how it builds out titles for you, how it builds out descriptions for you. And this is just incredibly powerful. In addition to that, if we come down here to the tags, we could see this suggests new tags. And if we actually click into one of these tags, we could see the search volume for all these different tags in order to start to find which videos and which tags will actually end up doing better. Now, in addition to that, if you come over to vidIQ.com, you're going to see this optimize tab right here. If you click on this, you can now go through and optimize your content, both long form and shorts content. So let's say this video right here, we wanted to optimize, we click on this, and this actually goes through and gives us different title suggestions. We could get it to give us different description suggestions, different tag recommendations, like what I was showing you before, but this will also actually go through, watch your content, analyze your content and tell you what you should be doing differently or there are parts that you should be removing or things that you should be removing or things that you should be learning from uploading this video in order to optimize the next content that you make. So we could say that this went through, this gave us a content score right here, shows us the video, and then it literally goes through frame by frame in order to give us different feedback here that we could then implement into the content. If we wanna click on more info, this literally shows us what to change and why it improves engagement. And you could go through and do this for all of your past videos in order to optimize them and get them re-kicked back into the 2026 algorithm. And the best part about vidIQ is you could go to the pin comment below and get started with it today. If you want to get more views on the videos that you've already uploaded by kicking them back into the algorithm, you need to be using this tool. Now change number four is you need to make sure that you're going through all of your videos and replying to every single comment that you get. I cannot emphasize how important this is. And YouTube actually just released a brand new feature that allows you to reply to comments with a voice note, which makes it way quicker to do this because you can speak like 20 times faster than you can type. Well, most people can speak 20 times faster than they type, and it's also a lot more personalized. And what replying to comments does for you on YouTube is actually gets your audience to want to come back to the video, and it actually does get them to come back to the video. Because when you reply to somebody's comment, they get a notification, they come back to your video, it counts as an extra view, and it makes you eligible to get seven future impressions on another video or on a past video. And guess what this does? Increase the odds that you get more views and more subscribers when you go ahead and do this. Now the final thing that you need to make sure you're doing is going through your video, looking at the audience retention and getting rid of any parts of the video that are clearly tanking your retention. Here's how you do that. Okay, so here's how you actually do that. You're gonna come into a video right here. You are going to click on details. On the left-hand side, you are going to want to scroll down and you are going to see editor right here. Now, if you click on editor, this is going to pull up where you can blur things out, you could change your audio, you could change your end screen, your info cards, you can control your ads from here. You could even create video clips from here, which is pretty powerful. But what I wanna show you right here is actually if we come into analytics and we scroll down, we could see if there are areas where there are big dips. For example, there is a massive dip from right here to right here, and then it starts to flatten. So I can actually make a note of these timestamps right here, come back into this editor, and I can use the trim and cut tool in order to actually take that part out. Because clearly, whatever was going on at that part of the video, people didn't like. And when you go through and do this, what this is going to allow you to do is flatten out your audience retention curve. And this is going to make the YouTube algorithm think, hey, people are watching this video more consistently. And basically, you can edit your videos after 
after they've already been uploaded in order to make people watch them even longer. In addition to that, you could come over here and you could see if those things line up with your mid-roll ads or with your end screens or with when you have an info card or you could see if it lines up when different audio effects happen. And then this will allow you to actually optimize your content, change your content, after it's already been uploaded without you having to take the video down, make those changes, and then re-upload it. Now, if you wanna grow faster on YouTube the same way I helped this creator do it and this creator do it, I would strongly suggest you check out this video right here that walks you through three different ways that we can work together one-on-one -on -one and I can help you grow faster on YouTube by telling you everything you need to do for your specific channel and your specific situation. If that sounds interesting, well, please check out this video right here.